Welcome to the House of the Lord this fine fall day. We're going to start our announcements with a short video on the Fall Fest that we had yesterday. Thank you for that. It's the next best thing to being there. We will now have an announcement by Tyler about the upcoming um, planning retreat. Uh, just a quick adjustment again. Uh, as you know, it's going to be next Saturday from 9 to 3. Uh, it's now not in the all-purpose room anymore. It's going to be at Le Lebanon Lutheran Fellowship Hall in Felton. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know where that is. It's not too far from here. And uh, we want you to know that lunch is going to be provided, so you don't have to bring anything. So that's all. Thank you.
will now have an announcement by Corey Grove. Good morning. Uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month, and this year we've decided that we're going to uh, shower our, our pastor with uh, cards, uh, primarily because of the insinuating circumstances that he's going through at this time. Uh, we want to want the congregation to, as you can and are able, to send him a card of uh, well wishes, encouragement, and love uh, to help encourage and support him through this uh, difficult time that uh, their family is going through. Also, if anybody is interested, we are uh, collecting funds uh, to get them a gift card to Stauffer's uh, to show our appreciation for what they've uh, done here at our church so far. So if you'd like to contribute, please mark that on your envelope or see me uh, with that by November the 1st. Thank you. And Troy Hildebrand has an announcement. As you can see by the video, uh, yesterday was a huge success. Um, if you weren't able to be there this year, plan on trying to be there next year. Uh, we're already in the planning stages for next year. Uh, as you can see, we had the we had Philbert the Flamingo here from Isaac's in York, and we had the Sweet Frogs here from Sweet Frog in Shrewsbury, and they even took a hayride with the kids yesterday. So I just want to take this time to thank everybody that was there to help, and uh, we look forward to making it a little bit bigger and better next year. Thanks. Today is the last day to sign up for apple dumplings in the narthex. Um, they'll be available after 11 a.m. on November 5th. And I'm also going to tell you about the rummage sale coming up. November 5th, 8 to 7, and November 6th, 8 to noon. They still need some help in many areas, so if you can help, please see Rada or Ella Jane. All of the proceeds are going to help the entire church. As you've noticed, the youth have been doing a fall frenzy of sharing, and next week is the last Sunday for that. If you have any household cleaning products, paper goods, hygiene products, and toiletries, please bring them next Sunday. That will be going towards the Red Line Community Services. Next Sunday also, November 1st, is All Saints Day when we remember all of those who have passed away that have belonged to our church in the past 50 years. If you have not gotten a picture in of your loved one, <coughs> um, please get it in by Thursday, October 29th, to Sandy Rock. Just put it in her mailbox. Coming up is the Candy Cane Craft Show, November 14th, and they have 30 vendors coming. They will also be having homemade soup, sandwiches, tacos, and baked goodies, so please come out for that and support the church. This week's activities today is confirmation class at 4.30, senior youth at 5.45, young life at 7.05, Monday, Girl Scouts at 6, Shining Light at 6, Boy Scouts 6.30, and Cub Scouts 6.45. Tuesday is God and Family at 6.30, God in Church 7.15, and Wednesday is Shining Light at 6, Senior Choir at 7. Thursday is Spirit of Praise at 7, and Saturday is the planning retreat that we talked about. The birthdays this week are today, Terry Mee and Kara Jo Brooks, Wednesday, Lisa Myers, and Friday, Matthew Schmuck. We'll be thinking of all of you as you celebrate your special day. At this time, we will have Greet Your Neighbor. So you may stand for that for a couple minutes.
you please stand as we do the call to worship? We gather on this Lord's Day to give thanks and praise to God. We are reminded by God that the love of God poured upon us is also many for our brothers. We are called by Christ to love one another as he loved each of us. Today we hear these words anew. May our hearts and spirits be filled with God's love and compassion. Amen. Amen. Please continue standing for the hymn, Oh How I Love Jesus, number 170. sit down. At this time we will be blessed by the special music by Young Life, Let It Shine.
Thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Good message for us this morning. Good morning. Well, I'm up here, uh, not because Pastor Mitch isn't here, but I kind of worked out good for him. But we're celebrating Lady Sunday today. So <clears throat> what we're trying to do is we always involve a lot of laity. Uh, service couldn't happen without the laity, whether the choir, you know, laity, the, the young life, all laity, all of our tech group back there, you know, all laity, our greeters, uh, all laity, our, our ushers, you know, all kinds of things that happen, you know, within our church, the ministries, the committees, all laity, uh, doing the ministry of Christ here in Winterstown. So we praise God for all the laity that have given of their time and their talents uh, and their ability to reach out to uh, each other in the community. So we celebrate the uh, laity today uh, on this uh, Laity Sunday. And it came at a good time for, for Pastor Mitch that after, you know, three uh, bouts of uh, uh, treatments this week, he could rest uh, this weekend from, from that. So uh, things are working out. So we want to keep him uh, in our prayers. Uh, prognosis is good, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a, a six-month process in the treatments that he's going to have to go through. So there'll be a few changes that, that we'll be doing here as we help nurture him uh, through that particular period of time. We'll have to be careful that, uh, especially in this winter time, we don't give our germs uh, to him because he will be in a weakened immune state uh, during that period of time. So we want to keep him uh, in our prayers and, and take special precautions uh, whenever we can uh, when we're around him. So we praise him for that. Uh, <clears throat> prayers and concerns. Uh, do we have any joys or, or concerns this morning? I want to thank Tyler Jackson for the wonderful work he does with his videos and putting on YouTube and everything. You're an amazing kid, Tyler. Keep up the good work. Thanks. Also, prayer for Bruce Grove. He fell this week and broke his leg, and he is in the hospital at this time. Last evening, we had the pleasure of spending some time with our one niece, and she works for the Gettysburg School District, and she asked me if I would put a patient of hers, a student of hers, on our prayer chain here at church. Her name is Alma Hernandez. She's a seventh grader, and she's being diagnosed with leukemia. Troy? Oh, sorry. <laughs> While you're up front. <clears throat> I'd just like to let you know the youth slept out in boxes last night. We were homeless people. <laughs> and, of course, it rained, which it usually does. But they didn't get wet. They were in their boxes. And uh, we had a really good evening of sharing about homeless people you know, what we can do maybe in our small way to help. And I appreciate your giving this morning because the monies that you gave will be given to Redline Community Services to help the people in our area, plus the food from the Fall Frenzy. We thank you for all that. I want to thank God for sending me company, uh, and I appreciate it very much. And living alone, it's like a breath of fresh air. And so, uh, Sophie Jane uh, lost her mother, and I lost my daughter, so we decided to join forces and start over again. And we, re we feel that we're related in that manner. And, and it's, it's been wonderful having her here, she and her husband. I took them on a a ride up through the mountains yesterday. It was, everybody tells me it was like a trip around the world. <laughs> I took them too far. 
but we had a nice time and the mountains were just magnificent. Welcome this morning. <clears throat> My sister Ruth Ann Groff still needs your prayers. Her husband was in the hospital four days this week, and he has improved some, but not too much. And their son, Lance, also has pneumonia. So we just need prayers for the whole family. Thank you. I'd like to ask prayers for the family of Carrie Earhart um, that passed away this week. She was a teacher at school and friends of our daughters, and it's tough on her whole family and all of the community with the school district. She was a very outspoken, wonderful girl. Anybody else? Okay, at this time, we'll <clears throat> join our hearts together in prayer. Father God, we just thank you and praise you that we can come in to your presence this morning. Thank you that we have that privilege. Thank you that we have that freedom. Help us not to take it for granted, but help us to do those things which would continue to strengthen your presence here in our community and in our country and in our corner of the world, Lord. We thank you that you do hear our prayers. We thank you for the joys that were expressed. Thank you so much that you do bring joys and happiness into our lives. You know, we know that it's there. We have lots of times of, of happiness and joy with family and with friends, and we just thank you and praise you that you bless us with those times. And then we look to those, Lord, that need your help, need your help, and things look a little bleak in their situations. Lord, we ask that you would touch all those that are under the uh, situation where they have cancer and they need treatments. And Lord, we just ask that you would heal their bodies, strengthen their bodies, that you would give the, the doctors and the caregivers uh, wisdom and understanding to do the right things at the right time. But we ask that your healing hand would reach into each one of those lives, each one of those situations, and be your healing power. And we think of Pastor Mitch as we, we think of those that are afflicted with cancer. Lord, we ask in a special way that your healing hand would be upon him, give him strength, give him healing, so that he can continue to be... Uh, <coughs> leading your ministry here at, at Winterstown, helping to be able to, to continue on in, in spite of what, what is going on, helping to get stronger and stronger each week, Lord. And we do ask that your, your love and your concern would go out to those that have lost loved ones. Lord, it's so difficult, especially for the situation where we lose somebody that is young, and, and still full of life and touching other individuals. Lord, we ask that you would heal the hurt, heal the void, uh, and continue to guide and strengthen all, Lord, that are touched by that and, and work with them through the grieving process. Lord, we ask that your protection and love would go around to your children everywhere around the world. There's so many situations that your children are being persecuted, that they're being killed, they're being tortured. Lord, we ask that your hand would be upon them, that you would give them protection and guidance, give them peace and a joy in, in the midst of all the, the hurt and turmoil that, that they're facing. Lord, we ask that you would continue to, to put your hand upon our country and upon the world, that knowing that you are in charge, Lord, we ask for your guidance, for your wisdom, for your understanding. And for our leaders, Lord, we, we pray that you would help them to make the right decisions and the right choices, Lord. Go with us this morning, Lord, as we worship and glorify your holy name. For we ask it all in the name of Jesus, who taught us to say when we pray, 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now we please stand and we'll sing together our hymn, uh, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, 526. be seated. And now we have the pleasure of uh, the senior choir sharing their message and song with us. Is this in the way?
Thank you very much, choir. That was great. At this time, let us take our gifts to God with our tithes and offerings. pray together. O oh, Heavenly Father, we praise your almighty name. You have blessed our nations with immense wealth and opportunity. Lord, you have commanded us to honor you with our wealth, and I pray that you will be honored greatly today as we give to you what is already yours. Bless these tithes and offerings that, they, that we give to you. We love you, O oh Lord, and in your name we pray. Amen. Our scripture lesson for today is first going to be found on 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 16 through 21. For we did not follow cleverly devised stories when we told you about the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ in power, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. He received honor and glory from God the Father, when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain. We also have the prophetic message as something completely reliable, and you will do well to pay attention to it, as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the will of prophets' own interpretation of things. For prophecy never had its origins in the human will, but prophets, though human, spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. And now we will read from John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. I have loved you, just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love, and do not doubt my love for you. If you keep my commandments and obey my teaching, you will remain in my love, 
just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you, and that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. This is my commandment, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another, just as I have loved you. No one has greater love nor stronger commitment than to lay down his own life for his friends. You are my friends if you keep on doing what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you my friends, because I have revealed to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have appointed and placed and purposefully planted you, so you would go and bear fruit and keep on bearing and that your fruit will remain and be lasting, so that whatever you ask of the Father in my name, as my representative, he may give to you. This is what I command you, that you love and unselfishly seek the best for one another. May the Lord bless this, the reading of his holy word. Welcome Terry to the pulpit, and he'll present our message for this morning. sit down before we fall down. <laughs> so I <clears throat> appreciate you allowing me to do that uh, as, as we share uh, this morning. Now, when you look at these two verses of Scripture, what you have is a, enough material for mm, several hours, <laughs> uh, maybe a sermon, uh, continuation from, from one week to another. But <clears throat> since I'm just a layman, I'm going to take these, and I'm going to take bits and pieces that I think God is impressing me with and, and try to share those bits and pieces uh, to see what God is saying, at least to me, if not to you, but, but hopefully to all of us in some way or another. Now, now when I look at these, and, 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 and I'm thinking about the, the question that I hear people talking about uh, in the world, in the community, and there, there's two main things that I think that I hear. Is one question is, is, is the Bible really true, and can I believe it? Can, can I follow it and, and, and live by it, and is it anything real? Because the world is telling me, no, it's, it's not real. It's not true. And the second question is, is God really a God of, of love? Because I see so much hurt in, in my life and family's lives and you know, friends and, and community. I see the hurt of sickness, disease, of loss. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I see the atrocities that are happening around the world. Is God really a God of love? If he is, how could he allow all of this? Um, and, and hopefully we're going to touch on some of that. And what I'm going to do is just pick out some of the, the verses that I think speak to some of these questions. So first of all, we'll look at uh, Peter, what Peter is saying, and uh, try to look. He's telling us that the Bible is true. So when we look at that particular passage, we're going to look, is the Bible true? And if it's true, what is, what is its meaning uh, to us as, in, as individual uh, believers? And the, the first uh, phrases that he uses there is uh, <clears throat> Peter saying, Hey, what we wrote, we were eyewitnesses of. So it's reliable what we put down. So you, you can trust it. You know, we didn't use clever stories or we didn't use myths, but we used the, the truth that we saw, the truth that we have from Christ, and that is what was put down in Scripture so that you can count that Scripture is reliable. And he's also pointing to the Old Testament as well as being completely reliable. So all the individuals in the world that are saying, hey, it's just a bunch of stories, just a bunch of old men, you know, writing their own opinion of things. No, it, it's not that way at all. Uh, they can choose not to believe it, but that doesn't make it not true. The, the, the Bible, uh, as uh, pointed out here, is, is true. 
And the Bible really is God's love letter to us, uh, telling us how he, he loves us, interacts with us. And if it wasn't true, that then we would have uh, no truth coming into our lives. And then he also said that it's like a light shining in a dark place. And when you look around the world and you see places where the word of God is not there, there's great darkness, great evil, uh, great harm coming to, to, to individuals where there's darkness. And the personal aspect of, of that shining of that light of the gospel, uh, the, the word of God, I know if I've experienced it, it's shown a light within me. It's helped me to understand, to be enlightened to, to the ways and the wills of God uh, in a way that just speaking to an individual could not do that for me. But the word of God enlightens me and, and gives me uh, focus, transforms me in, into what uh, I need to be. And if it was just a bunch of stories, a bunch of myths, it wouldn't do that uh, for me. So that's uh, the first thing that, that Peter's saying. The second thing that he's saying there is that no prophecy of Scripture is given according to anybody's private interpretation. So nobody went out there privately and said, okay, this is the way it is, everybody else is wrong. Now when we look at the other religions of the world, that's essentially what happened. There was an individual who said, hey, I've seen the light. Uh, you know, Islam is one of the, the prime things. Muhammad saw the light and he recorded all this that was uh, given to him, and, and because we see how evil that is and the results of it, we can tell that, hey, that's not of God, that's of Satan that, that channeled that and, and put that uh, out there. So we can see that there are places where people did put out their own interpretation, and it's always pr proved to be wrong, untrue, didn't happen. Uh, and. Uh, what we read in uh, John is 10 times that <clears throat> John tells us uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that uh, all scripture is there, it's true, and it will not pass away. And of course, Jesus himself said, hey, the earth, the world, heaven may pass away, but never will my word pass away. It's sure, it's true, uh, and it's there. And Jesus quoted the Old Testament more than anybody else. And if Jesus, our Lord, is quoting the Old Testament, he wouldn't be quoting a myth or something that's not true because he, he along with God directing him, guiding him, would have known what the truth was uh, as the Holy Spirit was, was working through him. So Jesus demonstrated that the, the word was true uh, and was not going to pass away. And then the, the next thing that those particular verses uh, bring out is the fact that prophecy did not come through a human mind. So <clears throat> they're kind of like the private interpretation. It also wasn't made up by human individuals, but it, it came to us as God caused men to write through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So as we have scripture uh, put down for us, it's guidance of the Holy Spirit that caused these men to write what God is. So I know my, myself, whenever I look at the, the Bible, <clears throat> my focus is and my understanding is I'm not looking at what Peter wrote or what John wrote. I'm looking at what God wrote. And that can have a meaning in my life. Uh, so it's not an, an individual that, that did it on their own. And 3,800 times in the Old Testament, the writers of that Old Testament, 3,800 times said uh, in, in part or, or uh, completely, this is the word of God. Hear the word of the God. This is what God said. Uh, <clears throat> all those different references that they put down in the Old Testament, they, it's not our words, it's God's word. It's what he caused us to write and, and to put down. So they're all those experiences. And then, of course, Paul in his, his letter to Timothy, the little inset that you have in your uh, folder there at the top, it says, all scripture is God-breathed. So Paul, you know, it, it was backing up Peter and saying, hey, it's, it's all from, from God. And it's given not to scare us, 
not to put us in a, in a box so that we can't have any fun or any joy, but no, it's to allow us to have the understanding that we can, we can walk alongside of God, we can stay out of the swamp, we can stay out of the pits, and, and we can have a more joyous life uh, by being guided by the word of God in, in all these uh, particular situations. And then if you, you take it, not what God says here, but you know, I'm an engineer, it's my background, so you know, I gotta put some engineering-wise into it. Uh, and what intrigues me is the science of mathematics. What does the science of mathematics say about the truth of the Bible? Now, we know that scripture, some of it is telling us what's gonna happen in the future. A lot of it is just telling us a relationship with God, uh, what's true, what's right, uh, how God can bless us, how we can live our lives to be fruitful uh, to ourselves, to our family, to other ones. But there are times that, that God has said, okay, here is something that's going to happen in the, in the future. I want you to be prepared for this. And then the other thing, when it happens, I want you also to understand that, hey, if, it's, if it happened exactly how I said it, down to the detail, then you can count on the next time I say something uh, to you. So when we look at mathematics... Uh, and we look at Jesus, uh, Jesus' first coming, his, his life, his death, his resurrection. There are over 300 prophecies uh, detailing all of that. They all happen exactly as they were laid out in the Bible. So what is the chance that, hey, it wasn't God directing that, but it, it was just a chance happening. So <clears throat> what's the probability <laughs> Okay, the probability is one uh, versus one with 157 zeros behind it. That's a number too big for us to, to comprehend. So what that's saying in mathematics is, hey, that's a number of infinity. And when you compare one to infinity, it's, okay, it's a certain thing. Uh, God had to know, had to direct the, the course of events in order for this to happen. And, and just to, to give you a picture of how extraordinary that is, uh, we all know what an atom is, right? An atom is the little thing that makes up everything <laughs> in the world. And it's so tiny that even the, the most powerful microscopes can't even see it. It's that tiny. Well, how many atoms are there in the world? Well, there's 1.33 with 50 zeros behind it. So what that means is if you take three Earths with all those tiny little atoms and you could pick out the atom that says it was just by chance. You, you can't do that. That, uh, th that is telling us that it's impossible to do something like that. And then when you look at the whole Bible, there's over 2,500 uh, predictions of, or prophecy of things that are going to happen in the future. A lot of them, 2,000 of them have already happened of the 2,500. And the probability of them happening exactly as they were put down in the Bible, that's one with uh, 2,000 zeros behind it. I mean, now, now, you, now you're talking about one tiny atom in 440 Earths. Uh, that, you know, there's so many atoms in those that you can't even count them. So mathematics say it's, it's got to be a certainty that, that the Bible is true. Nobody could have done those things by chance. So God mathematically is telling us, hey, this is true. I don't care what anyone else says. Uh, mathematics proves that it is true. So for, for all those things, uh, in my mind, it says that the Bible is the word of God. It is truth. I can depend on it in every situation. Uh, not like some people that said, well, <clears throat> I'll pull this verse out, pull this chapter out, pull this book out. Uh, and when you start doing that, you can't believe any of it. But it is. It's true. It's, it's proved by the apostles. It's proved by prophecy. It's proved by mathematics. So then we'll look at the, uh, the other aspect. Now, now that we know the Bible is true, what does it say about love to, to us? Uh, and that's kind of why I, I titled the, the, the message True Wild Love. So we found it's true. Now we're going to look at God's wild love uh, is kind of what it says to me at different, different times. 
uh, the, the first uh, mention there is Jesus says, I have loved you as God the Father has loved me. Now, mankind, love is probably the greatest need that we have as individuals is, is to be loved. Anybody that lives a life without love is totally miserable uh, and, and doesn't live much of a life at all. But we need the love. And when no one else is there to love us, God is going to step in and Jesus says, I will love you just as the Father loved me. Now, do you think God loved Jesus eh, half-heartedly? Maybe today, not tomorrow. Sometimes I've acted that, that way. <laughs> I love today, but not tomorrow, you know, depending on what somebody did. But God says, no, I, I love you. Uh, and when no one else is around, I will pour my love into you. Uh, and that is a, a wonderful thing, that, that God poured a perfect love into Jesus continually. And Jesus says, I'm turning around, I'm, I'm going to pour that perfect love into your heart and into your life so that you can feel love no matter what's happening. Uh, <clears throat> we've all gone through very difficult times uh, sickness, disease, loss. And even in those times, God can pour his love into us and we cannot feel in total despair because his love is continuing to, to pour into us. And that's what he, he's saying to us here. I've loved you just as the Father loved you with that perfect love. Now what I want you to picture for me is <clears throat> on a mountainside, picture a, a stallion. Uh, a big, powerful stallion who is galloping across the mountainside. And you can see the muscles rippling and, and that, them just being untamed, just totally wild, uncontrolled, uh, nothing that man can do to, to, to rein them in. And to me, this is the type of love that Jesus is pouring into your life. He's pouring into my life. It's just a wild, untamed, uncontrolled type of love into my life and into your life. And that's the type of love that he's, he's pouring to us. But then he also says, uh, if you keep my commandments and obey my teachings, then that love that I'm pouring into you will remain there. So what that he's telling us there is, hey, I want you to come alongside and walk with me so that I can continue to, to pour in my love into you. But... I'm not going to force you that. I don't have you on a leash. I'm not going to force you to, to accept my love, to walk in, in my commandments or my teaching. But if you come along and walk beside me and, and kind of reflect what's, what, what I am to the world uh, and you can be to the world, then your love is, my love is going to continue to pour in. That's how we stay in the love of God, that we're walking with him. But what that also tells me is, hey, I have free will. I, I can reject that love if I want to, anybody. And unfortunately, a majority of the people in the world are doing that. They're rejecting that wild, untamed love that Jesus wants to pour into their lives. They're saying, no, no, I don't want that, that love. I'm, I'm holding that back. Uh, <clears throat> and I kind of did that uh, during periods of my life, uh, saying, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll open the door this wide <laughs> and let you pour love in that way, maybe not a huge river, but, but a stream into my life because what my thinking was was that if I open wide and let the, the, the great love of, you know, whatever, I'm going to have to pay him back for something. I've got to earn it. I've got to pay him back. That's not what he wants. He wanted me to open my arms wide he wasn't going to ask anything from me. He just wanted to fellowship with me. He just wanted to love me. Uh, so I encourage you all today, not, don't hold back, but, but open your eyes uh, and, and open your heart and your life to, to Jesus. And then it goes into, hey, there's no greater love than a man lay down his life for his friends. And when I think of what Christ did for me, uh, you know, I, I had a debt that I could not pay, and Christ took it upon himself. And when I think of the, 
emotional and mental ridicule and pressure that he went through uh, in his ministry and in his trials. And then the, the, the physical pain, pain is, is, you know, they, they beat him and they tore out his beard and they, they ripped his back to shreds with the, with the whips. And then he put his arms out and let, let them drive the, the spikes through his wrist and put him up on that cross. And at any second, through all of this, Jesus could have just said, called on 10,000 times 10,000 angels, and in a second they would have been there and they could have vaporized all of those that were creating all of this hurt and turmoil. But it, it was his wild, untamed love for me that kept him on that cross. And that's what he's saying for, to me here. I laid it down, this wild, this awesome love that I had for you. I needed to stay on that cross and go all the way through it for you so that you could have my love through my sacrificial death. It was awesome. It was wonderful. And then he wraps up those particular verses with saying, I chose you. You didn't choose me, but I chose you. Do you remember back to school days when you were out on a playground or whether you were uh, t some game in the classroom and uh, they were choosing up sides? Choose me. Choose me. I, I want to be chosen. I don't want to be left out. And I think that's the call of our heart today. We, we don't want to be left out. God, choose me. Jesus, choose me. And he's saying, I have. I have chosen you. You are worthy. I love you. With this untamed, powerful love, I choose you. Come alongside me. Walk with me. And be the fruit and the light in the world because this is what I call you to be and to do. So we see that uh, he loves us. He loves us in a, in a wonderful way. And what I want to do is I want to do something just a little different. I want us to pray together uh, for just a minute. But you're not allowed to close your eyes. What I want you to do is I want you to focus on the cross. Look at the cross and see standing beside the cross Jesus in all of his glory as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's not on the cross anymore. He went all the way for you and for me. And what I want to do is I want to lead you in prayer. I'll pray a phrase, you, you pray after me. And you can pray it with enthusiasm and, and, and power and, and love and faith. So here we go. I praise you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Forgive all my sins, Jesus. Cover them with your precious blood. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Fill me with your presence and the Holy Spirit. Guide my steps every day, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I praise you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Doesn't that make you feel good that, that, that we're now in close fellowship? I know that, that, that I do, we need to pray something like that on a regular basis so we keep our relationship with our Lord fresh and new without things getting in our way. You know, sin can push us away from his love. But as we repent of our sins and ask his forgiveness, you know, it just washes it away. And he doesn't remember those sins anymore. Not like I would do. So we know that it's true, and we know that he loves us with a wild love. Drink it in. Let us pray. Father God, we just thank you and praise you that you are such a wonderful, holy God. Thank you that you've given us our word, your word that is true, that we can trust it, and we can love it and, and help it to nurture our lives and guide us through the pitfalls of life. And Lord, we open our hearts, our minds, our spirits to your wild, untamed, unconditional love, Lord. We drink it in and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let us uh, stand together for our final hymn, To God Be the Glory, number 98.
now <clears throat> go in the truth and power of the word of God. Be filled with his wild and untamed love. Share it with others in the name of the mighty Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen.